Hey YouTube, Serious Time. I'm sure you're aware of the overbidding of all the big photo brands at the moment between Canon R5 and R6, the A7S 3 a potential GX6. We will talk about that, but the topic today is mostly about answering the question I'm most often asked, which camera to buy when you start photography. I could tell you, like all the photography gurus, gear doesn't matter. But in fact, it's a f***ing lie. Today I'm going to make infidelities to my Sony to spend an afternoon of debauchery with the competition. Canon hit hard with their last releases and I wanted to remember what it was like to shoot with one of their babies so I went to borrow a French EOS R to make some small comparisons. And for that we're going to do a photo shoot with Solène and Pauline, two musician friends who asked me to take a few photos for their jazzmen, the Solines. We've given ourselves a rather rural and floral term, and in Lyon, that inevitably means the Tedor Park. We are lucky to have a weather that is not too sunny, it's not too grey either, but there are big clouds that will act as a diffuser. We should be pretty good for our return to natural light after the last two vlogs. It's been a long time since I've used a Canon, and first impression, it's good to find their ease of use again. More than a year with my Sony, and I'm still struggling sometimes to find some menus. A little bit of background before we begin for those of you who are interested. Nobody cares. Nice hat. I started taking pictures on all the Canon SLRs, and when I started doing that professionally and went digital, I switched to Nikon. Yes, I knew photography before digital. I stayed with my D90 until the arrival of the Living God, the one who changed the game for all, the Canon 5D Mark II. Today, it probably seems normal to have video on a DSLR, but the one who made it possible is the 5D, and it's thanks to this camera that I started filmmaking. The second brain explosion again with the 5D was when it was possible to add Magic Lantern, a kind of plugin that allow you to record video in RAW. The quality was just Finally, I could have in terms of colors what I really had in mind, what I was able to express in photography, but not in video. Ah, I never been happier to create than with this camera. Fast forward, then I switched to the 5D Mark III. Then I was full-time on the video and tired of Canon's technology retention policy. I switched to the Panasonic GH5. Really great camera, but taking pictures with a micro for third, ah, never could get used to that. So I took again a Canon camera, the highest in the pro range, the 1DX Mark II, a monster. And then I went back to film in Vanuatu on one of the most remote islands in the world. How can I put it? Have you ever climbed a volcano with a dead donkey in your backpack? I'm not sure how to translate that expression in English, but <laughs> you got the idea. Anyway, who makes great photos, great videos too, compressed in a mere or less of a few hundred grams? Let's go to Sony. And that's pretty much where we are now. The first step is to find a secluded place where the girls can choose their outfits and change quietly. I'm used to shooting with professional models, so the difficulty of the day will be to manage people who are not professional and don't know how to pose. It's extremely difficult to know how to position your body, to find the right expression, to be relaxed. Difficulty doubled here. It's already complicated enough alone, but when you are two, so the first images will necessarily be of no interest. They are just there to hello the two sisters, to get used to the camera, to the successive triggering, to know when to move between two shots and to get over their mutual nervousness. Okay, now it's time to answer the question that comes up most often on my channel. Every time you will ask me that question, it's to this video that I will send you back. I'm starting photography. What camera should I buy? You have to buy. How do you want me to answer that? The problem is there is no standard beginner's camera that we all have to go through. The purchase of a camera, any equipment, will be determined by two factors. The use you make of it, itself limited by the budget at your disposal. The camera that does everything and does everything well, it doesn't exist. And that, whatever your budget. Let's take an example. You're only interested in pictures of sporting events. It moves a lot. The key factor for you should be the number of possible triggers per second, the burst mode. Cameras cheaper than this one will have a higher burst mode, but they will be less efficient in other aspects of the shooting. The price, the size are not necessarily related to a specificity necessary to a genre. You have very great photographers who don't even use a DSLR, but a small point and shoot camera because it corresponds to their practice. But you, do you want to do more of portraiture, landscape, sports, animal? Do you need to shoot video too? What is the way that suits you best? And this is just to talk about what matters least, the camera body. The most important thing is the lenses. It's with them that you're really going to orient yourself towards the type of image you are going to take. Again, 
you'd like to be able to cover all the focal length, be super bright so you can do everything with one lens. If you could do that, the BJ would be you don't even want to know. The problem is there, you want to be able to do everything, but you don't know how to do everything because you're just starting out. Gear matters, it's even crucial. To say otherwise will be stupid, but is that what you need to focus on when you're just starting? Okay, we just find a pretty interesting place with this arc created by the trees that will be able to frame my image and give a feeling of depth. The girls are a bit more relaxed and are starting to play the game. We have much better expressions. But the best way to divert a person's nervousness in front of the camera is through action. Throughout the shoot, I ask them to take their instruments and play. It will force their mind to concentrate on something else and, and to be less frozen. Once this problem was solved, I tried to make my images a little more interesting. First by trying different frames, by using an angle or shooting at ground level. I also tried to further increase the feeling of depth by adding elements in the foreground. But in the end, my favorite images are those that will go out of the full frame scale to get closer to the human scale. You immediately get a lot more emotions on these portraits, especially this one of Pauline looking at her sister. The image could have been really perfect if there were space to breathe above her head. Let's take my case as an example, okay? If I want a new camera, I will look at the specification I want and they are very personal. My ideal camera is good for both photography and video, but what I really like is to be able to find the look I can create in photos in videos. And for that, let's summarize. I want a light camera, so a mirrorless. Full frame with a super color science, but above all, that can film in RAW. Yes, but I said I also want to take pictures. Well, there isn't. I immediately stopped the camera gigs from saying, hey, the new R5, it's marketing. RAW had been to be available in all formats. Who's going to do 8K RAW? The ones who can edit this kind of file it's gonna create, they won't shoot with a small mirrorless camera. And you're going to tell me, yeah, but the latest Sony? Well, stop, I'm telling you, no. What I want, it doesn't exist. So, what now? We find this nice clearing. It's very bucolic and it matches what we had in mind. Very nice picture, obviously the heels of the foreground it's a classic, it works very well to give texture. I really like their very solemn expression with this look out of frame. I like it even more in landscape, the poses are great too. The only flaw for me is this plant that crosses Pauline's face. The focus being on her, it adds a blur not very pleasant on her cheek, I'm not fan of that. An image that will certainly not be usable for their communication, but I like its spontaneous feeling. We have something much more professionally usable here, and the view from above works well. Solen's expression is also superb, very inspired. Here the fact that I've managed where will apply the blur of my plants in the foreground gives a more interesting effect than the image we saw earlier. It's pretty cool, and the background with the water is a nice addition. So I went back to my Sony for a few minutes to take advantage of the 15-35mm and use a wide angle. Mm, why not? It tells a nice story even if the picture is not extraordinary in itself. And finally, maybe another angle could have improved this picture, but honestly, I find it really cheesy and a bit kitschy. It only reminds me of one thing. The gear acquisition syndrome, this need to compulsively buy equipment that you don't necessarily need. We all live in the same consumerist society and the marketing message at work here, which is behind the quest for the latest camera among amateurs, semi-professional, even professionals, is that creativity is correlated to the latest technology, whereas it's only correlated to the tool. There are two reasons why a professional invests in gear. The first is legitimacy. In a world governed by appearance and communities, the tool you show ostensibly have an impact on your credibility. Except that's not what this video is about. Let's not talk about that. The main reason, and it took me years to understand that, is that when you start an artistic activity or entrepreneurship, your vision of what's most important is centered on tools or money. Besides it's money is just a tool, nothing more. While the greatest value of a professional is his or her time, why is a professional photographer can put an indecent amount of money into a camera just for one feature? For the production time, it will save him. A shoot from above. Quite hard to achieve with a 50mm, but not impossible either, especially if the subject is completely lying on the ground. Very good image with the direct look of Solin and the evasive look of Pauline. I like it very much, but 
we have the ukulele that just adds an incomprehensible shape here, we have this empty space badly managed in the opposite corner, and finally this twig that just tickles Pauline's nose and hinders the visibility of her face. I'm sorry, that's a no. Here I try to use the music instrument to compose the image diagonally and cut it in two parts. Unfortunately, Solin's pose on the lower right edge is not great. We could have had a better picture if we had persevered and tried some more. At last we have it. The instruments close the picture on the edges, the plant follow the curves of the faces, their expression with eyes closed is perfect. One of my favorite images of today's photo shoot. Finally, two rather nice pictures. The focus could have been better managed here, but the girl's fun attitude makes up for it easily. And finally, another picture that I love, especially the expressions on Pauline's look. The big secret is this. Believe it or not, you are already able to do 90% of what a professional photographer can do with what you have at your disposal. So yes, you will have to manage natural light and do a million tests, find how to do without or how to simulate depth of field with a smartphone. You may spend days, but you are able to get an aesthetic result as good than a professional. So what's the difference? He will arrive with his pro lights, understand the scene in seconds, trigger his camera and he will have a perfect shoot in a few minutes. He has invested in his production time, but also in his experience. No camera will make you a better photographer. You will be faster, you will have better autofocus, etc. Gear does matter because it makes you more efficient, more effective, but in no way, none, it makes you more talented. No camera can make you better at composition, storytelling, understanding light. And as a beginner or even more advanced, that's what you have to work on, not performance. We find a very cool spot with this field of flowers, whose name I won't pretend to know, and this super old mansion in the background. A nice picture but with a classic problem when shooting two people. The goal was to guide the reading on Solen's face with a direct look into the lens. Except that Pauline's face remains frontal and her gaze is not off-center enough. It also attracts attention and confuses the understanding. Here her face is just slightly blurred because she's just a shoulder behind her sister. She should have been moved back a little so that she would have been out of the sharpness zone much more significantly. Either both spaces are sharp, as here, or one of them is clearly in the blurred area so that the other one can be detached, as here. A barely blurred face is just a bad shot. I love their complicit look here, but just for the sake of nitpicking, it would have been cool if the flower in the center had been shifted just a few centimeters. Finally, the perfect image for this part of the photoshoot in terms of the pose, the expressions, even the background which offers more material with the building. Yeah, that's great. The problem I have with this obsession with the gear is the messages I get. I can't take pictures, I don't have a great camera. Coming from beginners from whom it's actually not important. Every time they ask me on Instagram to criticize their pictures, I never answer, ah, oh, sorry, your images are bad because you don't have a great camera. Photography basics are light and composition. As long as these two concepts are not acquired, you can shoot with anything. Ah, oh, wait, let me rephrase that. Gear does matter. If you really want to get into photography, yes, it's a good thing to have a camera that gives you some creative latitude, having a way to control depth of field, to be able to change the focal length. But an entry-level DSLR does the job as well as the latest camera with a lot of features you will never use. You won't be a better photographer with it. A photographer isn't the one with the biggest lens, it's the one who takes pictures. And that today is available to everyone. It's like the cult for one brand or another. Let's compare for a second the images made with the Canon and the images made with the Sony. Can we really say there's a big winner? Yes, as I often say, I love the Canon colors, but on the RAW file, once you've edited your image. Today, the war is not about the quality of the images, they are almost identical, but about the performance and shooting option offered by the cameras. Let's go back to my personal case. Finding a camera that meets all my expectations is not possible. I would have to resign myself to separate my two skills, a camera body for photography on one side and push the video capabilities on the other side by looking in the range of cinema cameras, but I think I'm not there yet. However, I did buy a new camera, the 5D Mark II. The camera I had about 10 years ago and which I love like my child, my baby. Is the difference between these images significant? I can also shoot in Full HD in RAW with Magic Lantern and I got it for $500. You don't necessarily have to look at what's trending right now. Shut up and take my money!
Okay, we are going to end our photo shoot near the lake with some good images that we will look at very quickly. A good diagonal composition, and this time Pauline's face is sufficiently directed out of frame so as not to interfere with the reading of the image. Here too, the composition and the different focal plan are very well managed, but it is especially the poetic aspect of this picture that I love. A low angle view, quite good. It's nice, that's it. Let's say it's nice. Not bad. Okay, I know it's not at all in the photoshoot theme, but it's just that I managed to capture a real moment of love. It's very natural and I love it. A must have that you have to think about for that kind of photoshoot, some close-ups to go with the portraits. And finally, my favorite image for today, everything is there. Composition, light, expression, atmosphere, yeah, I love it. Come on, you waited until the end, thanks for the watch time, and sorry I had a lot to say. Because you stayed, you deserve my advice on how to find the camera of your dreams. First of all, don't expect me to give you a specific model. Tell you one thing, a new camera is coming out, everyone is talking about it, wow, great. But in six months, it will be obsolete because they have to sell new ones. And yet models that used to be reserved for professionals now have price tags that you can find more in the amateur market. No, you won't have the latest autofocus, but you will be able to get a full frame camera. Second, and that's probably the most important one. There's a quote I love that sums it all up. Date the camera, marry the lens. Most of your budget should go into the lens or lenses, not the camera body. The technical quality of a photo, it comes 90% from the lens. And now you're going to tell me which lens should I buy? I can't help you. My opinion, it would be to start with a 50mm. They are very affordable lenses, quite versatile. But I'm telling you this, I'm a portrait photographer or I do street photography and it's perfect for that. But if you want to do landscape or wildlife photography. What are you going to do with a 50mm? You see how impossible it is to give you advice if I don't know your situation. Free, and that's really more of a personal opinion than advice. When you're starting out, you want a zoom to cover as many situations as possible. It's relevant. However, I'd rather go for a prime focal length. First of all, it's more interesting in terms of value for money. Zooms offer an extraordinary quality today, but not the entry-level zooms, sorry. Also, yes, a prime focal length is much more restrictive, but but that's exactly what is interesting. The constraint it will impose on you, it will be extremely instructive. Yes, you're going to have a hard time, but the creativity it will force you to develop will boost your learning. But that, once again, is just my opinion. And finally, very important, the time you invest in always looking at the latest gear released, reviews, even money invested, invest it in learning. Practice photography rather than making it depend on the camera model you have in your hands. Lightning, composition, learn to master that before to master all the menus of the latest Canon. I say Canon because nobody on earth can master the menus of a Sony camera, even people from Sony, I guess. Invest your time in learning, not owning. Holy shit, that's beautiful. Ah, this video was way too long, I know. Go relax and chill by liking the Solin's Facebook page, for example. If you have some questions other than which camera should I buy, that's what the comments are for. Subscribe, like, sharing, blah, 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 blah. Ah, okay, stop. Bubble tea break. <laughs> See you, mate. Keep on creating.